Scaling your business involves knowing what you have and where you want to get to, which means it's going to take some investment. The unique challenge in AVD is that there will be different needs for different parts of the day. So I'm going to help you solve this problem today with the latest Azure Virtual Desktop feature, Autoscale. I'm Dean Safola, and this is the Azure Academy. If you've watched any of my over 60 AVD videos, you've heard me talk about the native scaling tools before. The deployment used the Logic app and an Azure Automation account to work its magic, and it's been a very good tool. But the feedback Microsoft has heard from all of you is that you wanted this to be more of a native feature in the virtual desktop service. So please comment below with your thoughts and keep that feedback coming. Now to get started, you'll need at least one host pool, and you want to make sure that the session host limit, which you can find in the properties of that host pool, is not set to the default of 99999. Otherwise, you'll need a massive environment to do any scaling, so I've got mine set for three in this example. Finally, the Azure Virtual Desktop Service will need to be granted permissions over your virtual machine session host so that it can do all of the powering on and off. And with all that, we need to start by creating a custom role. So just open the subscription that you want to deploy and you can follow along. On the left, you want to go to Access Control and at the top, go ahead and click the Add button and then select Add a Custom Role. Now you want to make this real easy on yourselves and just click the radio button to start from JSON. Now in the video description down below, I've got a link that's titled Auto Scale RBAC that looks just like this and that'll take you out to my GitHub page. Copy that and then click the blue button here and then just paste it in the box and hit open. That'll load the template with everything you need. Now on the permissions tab, you can see all of the different rights that you're creating in this role, which has to do with the powering on and off and some other functions that you can read on yourself. Then go to the assignable scopes tab and here is where you'll have to delete the little placeholder that I've got and now you're going to need to add your own scope. So click on the Assignable Scopes button. And then if you have management groups like I do, you'll see those here displayed first. You want to change this column here to Subscriptions. And then you'll see your subscriptions all listed here. Find the one that you want, select that, and then hit the Select button at the bottom. That's all the changes we need to make here. Go ahead and hit the Review and Create button and then build it. Once that's done, just to show you that it's here, go back to the Roles tab and then change the filter to look at Custom Roles. Then you'll see there we have Desktop Virtualization Autoscale. Now we need to assign this new role to the AVD service. So click the Add button at the top once again and then click Add Role Assignment. And over here on the right at the top, click the drop down for your roles and type the word auto scale. And there you see desktop virtualization auto scale, select that. And then the third box down is who you are granting the rights to. In there, just type Windows Virtual Desktop. Select that and hit save at the bottom. Now that we have our permissions all assigned, we need to create a new resource called a scaling plan. So over here in the ABD Admin Center, on the left, you can see that new item in the blade, Scaling Plans. Go ahead and click on that. Select the same subscription that you assigned the permissions to earlier. And here you can either use an existing resource group or create a new one. I'll call my scaling plan here Auto Scale, and then I'll set my location for East US 2. Give it a friendly name and a description. And then at the bottom, go ahead and select your time zone. And notice at the very bottom that the host pool type here is pooled. So personal pools are not supported at this time. And stick with me because uh, later on in the video, I'll have some tips for how you can use something similar to a scaling plan on your personal host pools. You don't want to miss that. And then at the bottom here, you have an exclusion tag. And this will tell the scaling plan to ignore those particular hosts when it's doing its magic. Click next. And then at the top, you want to click to add a schedule. Now for your very first schedule, this is going to be filled out somewhat for you. And that's just to give you an idea of what you should be doing. So notice that the name here is weekdays schedule, and then all of the different weekdays are selected and you can mix and match the days. However, it works in your environment. Just be aware that at this point, there is only one schedule for any given day. So if you include Monday here, you won't be able to add Monday to another schedule. Once you're happy with your choices here, click next. On the ramp up tab, this is where we can set our time trigger. That's of course when everything is going to start and notice that the load balancer algorithm is breath first, which is what people usually use. 
Now the next two items may need a little bit of explanation, and that's the minimum percentage host and capacity threshold. So let's say that we have 10 hosts in our pool, and each one of them is allowed to accept 10 user connections. So at 20%, Autoscale will make sure that there are two hosts running and available for their connections. Once you get to 60% of that total capacity, Autoscale will turn on more hosts. And you can play with the numbers here as you like. When you're ready, click Next. And on the Peak Hours tab, we've got something really cool. Generally, like I said, folks set up their pools as breath first, and that allows you to stack your users evenly across all VMs, which is very important in your logon storm. But notice that the load balancing algorithm now says depth first. And this means that Autoscale knows that we want to have the fewest number of VMs as possible, and we're already past that logon storm. And so we want to switch that algorithm now so that we stack the most number of users as possible onto each host so that we have the fewest number of hosts running. Go ahead and hit next. And in the ramp down tab, we've reached the end of our day and we want to help our users get logged off properly. Now the load balancer algorithm here is still depth first because we want the fewest number of hosts running. But notice now that your minimum percentage is now 10% and your capacity threshold is now 90, which means that each host will have to have more sessions on it. So for my earlier example of 10 hosts in the pool, each one taking 10 connections, that means that we will have one host minimum running and it will be able to accept nine connections before the next host will be turned on. Now you'll also have the ability here to force user sessions to log off and use that with care the last thing you want is to get unexpected calls from the users to the help desk complaining about the service. And this would probably be a good time to mention that you should be combining your user log offs with the group policies or endpoint manager policies for user idle and disconnect sessions so that everyone gets managed out of the environment properly. And I've covered those all in previous videos. And I'll link to that again at the end so that you can catch up. Click Next and we are finally at the off-peak hours. This is how things run in the evening. Notice that we're still in depth mode, that way if any users do need to log on off hours, there are the fewest number of VMs running as possible, and our capacity threshold is still at 90%. Once you're happy, click Add at the bottom, and there is your schedule. Now you can, as I said earlier, have multiple schedules, but you are limited to one schedule for any given day. And with some quick editing magic, now I've got a schedule for weekdays and one for weekends. And the weekend settings are done in such a way to keep the fewest number of hosts running as possible, which will help to continuously reduce cost, which is a benefit for all of you. Click next to add your host pool assignments and notice that there's a checkbox there to enable auto scale. Now you don't have to have that selected and you can simply just create the plan and the schedules without it and then assign them later, which I'll show you in a minute but I'm good with doing it right now. So I'll click the drop down for the host pool, select any of the host pools I want to apply this schedule to and note that the schedule will take place immediately. So whatever time it is, that's what the pool is gonna start doing. So just keep that in mind. Click next and add your tags. And those will help you keep track of what's going on in the environment. And you could even put a tag in there for the kind of schedule that you have. And once you're ready, hit create. And in just a moment, you'll have a brand new scaling plan resource. So let me give you the quick tour since this is new for everybody. In the middle of the screen, we see how many schedules we have in our plan and how many pools we're assigned to. Over on the left, you've got the properties section in the blade, and that's where you can change your time zone and also manage that exclusion tag I mentioned earlier. Under the host pool assignments, you can add or remove pools that are being managed by your plan. And under your schedules, you can modify your current schedules and create new ones. Just keep in mind, like I said earlier, at this point, every day can only be assigned to one schedule. Now this preview has been running privately for a little while and there were some good questions and feedback that came in. So I'm gonna go through some of those here cause you might've been thinking of some of this too. And one of those things you might be thinking of is that this is really great, but I really wanna run my host pool with zero hosts running. And I really like that idea too, but capacity thresholds are the thing to think about here. As long as there is at least one active session, you'll need at least one host running. So you may not be able to get down to zero in the first place. 
And for all of those users who, you know, forget to log off and just close the window, you will have your group policies or endpoint manager policies to help users who forget to log off properly to go from idle to disconnected to logged off. Then the auto scale will do its magic to turn off as many hosts as possible. Next question is, will auto scale provision new hosts and delete them? That's another great idea, but no, at this time it will not. And if you're interested in that feature being added, again, comment down below and let me know. What about configuring your hosts for special holidays? So you'd have your standard schedule for your Monday through Friday and your weekends, and then other holidays that would override the particular day, no matter what it is. Again, another really great idea, but not supported at this time because there's the current limitation of one day can only be assigned to one schedule. But if you're interested, again, let me know and we'll upvote that. Another really good question is what do these scaling plans cost? And the great news is there's actually no cost for the scaling plans at all, just like the rest of the Azure Virtual Desktop resources. Your cost in AVD comes from your virtual machines, your storage, and your network. The AVD resources themselves don't cost anything. Now, what about combining the auto scale feature with something else like Start VM on Connect? And there have been several requests for these two features to work together, and this will work with your pooled host pools. And I also mentioned that there are personal host pools that are not supported by auto scale. So for those, you should use Start VM on Connect, which will manage those for you and you can combine that with the auto shutdown feature. So at the end of the business day, you turn those VMs off and then the user will start it back up whenever they need to. And I've already covered this in a video, which you can see right over there. And there's definitely more to come on this new feature. So like, subscribe, share, all of that great stuff. And I will see you in the next episode. Happy learning.